to blossom despite the imperfections of those engaged. They belong to each and every one of us who have cried tears of wonder over the simplest of kindnesses that we felt we did not somehow deserve, or witnessed a purple-orange sunset that we could not have begun to imagine in our own minds. These experiences, <coughs> these experiences belong to each and every one of us who have touched the truth of which Louis Armstrong so wonderfully sang. The truth that we do indeed live in a wonderful World. In her book, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, Annie Dillard wrote that one day as she was turning the corner of an old barn, she looked up and saw a mockingbird suddenly fold its wings and dive 32 feet per second per second toward the earth. It looked as if it were intent on committing suicide. Then, at the very last moment, it raised its wings so that she could see that characteristic fluting of white that mockingbirds have on their wings and tails, and merely step off onto the grass as if it were stepping off of an escalator in a department store. She was entranced. And she kept contemplating the sight she had just become. Later, she wrote in her journal that she had been thinking about that old conundrum, the one about the tree that falls in the forest. You know, if there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? I wonder, she said, I wonder if I hadn't come around that building at precisely that moment and seen it, would there have been grace and beauty there? I could only conclude, she said, that there would. There would have been grace and beauty there, whether I had been there to see them or not. But the very least we can do, she added, is to try to be there. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a farmer would scatter seed on the ground and will sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. The farmer does not know how. Friends, it's not that God's kingdom does not take some tending. It is not that this world does not need, does not cry out, in fact, for our good works of justice and love. It does most certainly need them. And as God's kingdom people, as the farmers entrusted with God's garden, we are called to be faithful to the tending. But if we for a minute imagine that the kingdom will come solely through our effort and our intelligence and our goodwill alone, then we are fooling ourselves. And not only are we fooling ourselves, but we're likely to be missing out on a wonderful world. A world that is blossoming before our very eyes, with and without our best efforts. The kingdom of God is about a work of justice, acts of compassion, and it is about the delight of being surprised by goodness and beauty beyond our own doing and knowing. Jesus also said, 
that the kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed that grows into a magnificent shrub where birds make their nests in safety. What we miss out on by not knowing ancient Greek and Aramaic, or some of you perhaps do, but what we probably are missing out on is that Jesus is likely making a sort of joke here. And when we read scripture, we usually don't listen for jokes, but they're there. Jesus is probably making a kind of joke here. What we translate as a mustard seed was probably a common and annoying Middle Eastern weed. And the folks of Jesus' day likely spent constant effort pulling up this annoying invasive plant from their gardens day after day after day. It was like modern kudzu in the South. <laughs> the plant everyone loves to hate. So what in the world what in the world could Jesus have been thinking in comparing the kingdom of God to Kudzu? Perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps it's the tenacious, it's, it's that it is tenacious in its spread and could not be killed no matter how hard the gardener tried. Perhaps Jesus was saying, that love will never end, even when we fear there is not enough of it. Perhaps Jesus was encouraging us with the thought that even when we feel powerless against the very real forces of evil, powerless to stem its tide, the battles may be lost, justice will not permanently be thwarted. Maybe Jesus was reminding us that there is a God, there is a spirit of life who is at work and at play in this world, and the holy, wild, and tenacious way of the spirit of life cannot be stopped, even when human efforts cannot fully bring the kingdom in. And in fact, maybe the sheltering shade of the kudzu is not just for the birds in Jesus' story. Maybe that shade is for us, too. Maybe we are called to be both the persistent farmer, taking seriously our role in the miracle of growth and change, and at the same time, we are the birds, the birds which find shade and safety and rest in the community of the life of faith, in the community, the beloved community, which we call the kingdom of God. A kingdom whose coming surprises us time and time again, even though we have steadily been at work for its coming. So I think Jesus and Louis Armstrong and Annie Dillard and Albert Einstein are all on to something really big. Anyone who participates in this world and can no longer wonder and sit or stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead. But friends, God has a track record of raising the dead. So relax. <laughs> relax. Take a deep, deep breath. And be delighted in knowing that you do not fully know. For it's in those very moments, those very moments of speechless and utter awe, that you may have just 
discovered the kingdom of God. Amen.